Good morning, everyone. As always, it's great to be with you. Now, if you look right behind me, you'll see that it is a world map. And I think it's so fitting because there are times where we just simply need to sit, reflect, and remember that the earth is his. It's the Lord's and the fullness thereof. No matter what is going on, the situation and the circumstance, if we just take time out to remember that the earth is his and the fullness thereof. Our God created everything. He made everything and it exists today in and by him. Ponder on that because it's just so important, so important. Now, today I'm going to be sharing with you from Hebrews chapter one, and I think it's so profound. In fact, I'm going to read it. I'm reading from the Living Bible, and it says, long ago, God spoke in many different ways to our fathers through the prophets in visions, dreams, and even face to face, telling them by little about his plans. Do you know what his plan was? His plan was Jesus Christ crucified, died, and buried. And through that would become the reconciliation by redemption of all mankind. In other words, what he's telling us is the things that you and I get to see, God began telling them a long, long time ago. And he told them little by little, the prophets desired, they dreamed, they wanted to see the things that you and I get to see now in Christ, in the kingdom of God and his redemptive purposes. Hallelujah. And he spoke to them in visions and dreams. And yes, even face to face. But here's the, the great thing, excuse me. He's still doing the same thing. He's talking to us in visions and dreams and even face to face. But we have the written word of God. So we are to, able to receive the full counsel of God. You know that the will of God is the word of God. And God will never tell us anything through a vision, through a dream, through a prophet, or through a visitation that does not line up with his word. For indeed, he is the word. Amen. Glory be unto God. Let, let's continue on in verse number two. It says, but now in these days, he has spoken to us through his son, to whom he has given everything and through him, he made the world and everything is. Now, who's the son? Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Well, I hope this is stirring you up where you're ready to exalt. You're ready to praise and glorify the son. He is telling us his plans through his son. Do you know Jesus, again, is the one who created everything. Oh, I am so uh, perplexed when I think about it because the scripture says that nothing was made that was not made by him. Think about that. Ponder nothing. I don't care if it's the highest skyscraper in the world. If it is the biggest plane in the world, the, the largest mountain, the biggest ocean, whatever it may be, you fill it in for yourself. But there was nothing made that was not made by him. He is the creator of the universe and man can create nothing apart from God and God giving him ability to do so. Now, can they use it for things that are not according to the will of God? Yes, but the only way we can create is because the creator created us in his own image and likeness thereof. Now, let's continue on in verse number three. It says, God's son shines out with God's glory. You want to see the glory of God? It's in the Son, Jesus Christ. That's why we are to seek him so that we can find him. And Jesus, remember what he told his apostles, Philip in particular, when Philip was saying, well, Lord, uh, how do we know the Father? Or who is the Father? And he said, have you been with me all this time and you not know the Father? Because I tell you that if you know me, then you know my Father. I and my father are one. He goes on to say in, in the book of uh, John, he goes on to say, and all that God's son is and does mark him as God. Here is what we must ponder and know. Without a shadow of a doubt, inequivocally, Jesus is God. Amen. 
and any other gospel, any other religion or theology that does not denote him as God, then it is not the gospel of the kingdom and it is certainly not the good news. Jesus is God. He is the only begotten son of God. And though he was equal to God, he did not uh, find it where he felt like he was belittling himself or beneath himself in order to come in the form of a man so that you and I could be reconciled. We could be saved. We could be delivered. Let that never be a doubt in your mind. Jesus is God. Amen. They are three in one. He is God. And I want to tell you that if there's any voice or anything else that tells you anything different, it is not from the kingdom of God. That truly is the devil, and it is a lie. Amen. Glory be unto God. He regulates the universe by the mighty power of his command. He regulates it. He controls. You know what it means to regulate? Amen. To control. He reigns. Jesus doesn't just reign in heaven. He reigns on the earth. He regulates. He regulates the universe by the mighty power of his command. See, he is the one that's all powerful. He's the one that's almighty. And again, he is God. Every day, every minute, every second. That's why we, as Christians, we have the privilege, the honor of being able to be witnesses and declare he is God. He is God. And don't let anybody stop you or cause you to hesitate in declaring that truth, that fact, that reality. For forever and ever, he is the Lord. And forever and ever, he is God. Amen. And he is the one who died to cleanse us and clear our record of all sin. And then he sat down in the highest honor beside the great God of heaven. Oh, sink that into your souls and into your spirit. See, his blood is the one that cleansed us. He died on the cross, no one else, and only by and through the cross can we be saved. And only by the washing of the blood is our sins washed away and we become white as snow. What is crimson made us white as snow? How amazing, how, ma how magnificent and miraculous is that in itself? And it cleared us of all records of our sin. See, if we are in Christ, then our records have been cleared. Amen. And therefore, we should not be walking around in shame and condemnation, but anything else, anything else besides rejoicing and being grateful for what he has done and he has done alone. And then after he did that, he sat down on the right hand of the Father. He is in that honored, trusted position beside the great and mighty, awesome God, our God, our Father. Oh, what a privilege and an honor it is to call him Lord. Thus, he became far greater than angels as proved by the fact that his name, his name, Son of God, which was passed on to him by his father and is far greater than the names and titles of any angels. In other words, his name is the name above every name. There is none greater. There is none mightier. Jesus is God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And we get the privilege when we receive the Son, we receive the Father, and we have been sealed with the seal of adoption. That great name, that great name, power in the name. Don't fail to use that name. Don't fail to exalt that name. Don't fail to share that name with others. God bless you. Enjoy your reading. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.